Hi, it's Dan, and welcome again to the Mixture Rich channel. Today I want to talk about a problem that has nothing to do with flight simulation, but real-world flight. And the issue is, we have a plane here in Ottawa, Canada, where temperatures get far below zero during the winter season. So we have an engine block heater on our aircraft, we have a Piper Cherokee 180, I'm in a group of five guys, and we share this aircraft. Now, what do we have to do to warm up our engine before starting is we have to calculate an hour for every five degrees below zero, and if that's uh, 15 degrees below zero, we have to think about three hours before, and that means getting out to the aircraft three hours before flight time and plugging it in. So, what about a remote control solution? So this is what I wanted to come up with. I explored on the internet to see what kind of things we could do with that. There are various different options with cellular-based GSM solutions, very expensive. Now, one of the fortunate things that we have at our airfield, which is at Rock of CYRO, is that we have Wi-Fi all the way out to the field. So I set out to do some experimentation. So my experiment was with one of these Belkin Wemo Insight switches. This is a 110 volt switch, which can be operated via Wi-Fi and also remotely via the internet. I'm not going to get into how this operates and how you can set it up because it's really straightforward. It's all explained very well on the Belkin site and you can do that by yourself very easily. So I have this already set up. Now what do I need to do? I need to simply connect this out to the aircraft via an extension cord and then the extension cord out from here off to the aircraft and into the engine heater. Now, so I've done some field testing on that and it works fine. So the problem is the following. How do I ensure that something that was designed for indoor use can be well insulated and working outdoors in our frigid temperatures? So I've come up with a very simple but elegant solution. I ran off to the local hardware store and I picked myself up one of these Coleman coolers. So it's a little box. It's not that big. It's just the perfect size to fit some insulation. And don't forget a cooler like this already has some insulation factor. So if you're looking for the specific model here, it's a little tiny flip lid cooler that you can see here. I'll try to post that description in the link to the YouTube video. Okay, so now we have our Coleman here. And I'm gonna show how this lid operates. It's a flip up lid like this, but it also conveniently slides back and then the whole thing slides along a groove here. And it's used under normal conditions for picnicking. People can use these little cup holders. But for this project, it makes it very convenient to be able to slide over and leave a nice gap. I'm gonna show you this gap at the end where the wires can come out. And it also nicely tucks away the insulation down into the bottom of the box. So let's open this up again. What am I gonna do? I've cut a nice little square piece of home insulation and I'm going to stuff that right into the bottom of the box, like so. Next, I'm going to get my Wemo switch like this and I'm going to plug it into an outdoor extension cord that's rated to go to minus 50 degrees Celsius. Plug that in like that. This one conveniently also has a little lock on the top. It's made for people who use power tools outdoors or indoors so that it doesn't come undone. So now it's nice and tug in this it won't come apart. So, for the purposes of this demonstration, and for the purposes of the wattage of an engine heater on an aircraft, I'm going to use this hair dryer. So I'm going to plug in the hair dryer into the Wemo remote as such. I'm going to tuck all of this business down into here. And now I'm going to stuff more insulation into the top. like that and this is nicely insulated. Now I can just slide this cover back right across the top and you can see that gap is there for where my wiring is coming out and then I've also got this little strap here it's a little um, stretchy strap like this but I can't remember I picked it up but it doesn't really matter you can come up with your own solution on how to seal down this end because this cover here is going to want to move like that. What I want to do is wrap something around it like this so that it goes all around the box and holds this down. So I'm going to set that up now. And there you go. It's nice and snug. I'll just show you how that's done. I'm going all the way around with my strap like that. So that is holding the lid down. And at this end we've got the gap and I've got the wires coming out. Now, if you're concerned about uh, letting in any heat, uh, sorry, any moisture, you could always put a little piece of um, 
of uh, duct tape across here if you like. I don't think this is going to be an issue for us in particular because I'm going to be putting this box inside of a wooden crate box that we have outside our aircraft where we store some of our material for the aircraft. So it's protected from the elements. This thing is nicely protected uh, from the cold and that means that it should stay in a nice operational temperature and not give us any problems. The Wemo switch itself uses a couple of watts of course because it's connected to the internet and it's connected to power so it'll generate its own heat and it should be able to stay comfortable in this box without having any electronic failures. Now we're going to set up to test this and see how it works. Alright so now we're back I've got everything sealed up here I've got the Wemo Insight synced up to the internet and I've got this hair dryer here plugged into the Wemo and I've got my power going into the Wemo Insight switch itself so this hair dryer is set to the high position and it's going to draw quite a bit of wattage and it is as you can see turned off right now so I've got the Wemo app ready to go right here and it's very simple to use and it right now it's showing the power switch over here and some consumption data and it'll tell you how much it's costing I really don't care about that what I'm most interested in is the wattage right now it's showing a double dash down here which means it's not consuming any wattage because the hairdryer is not on which means that out in the field if I remotely activate the engine heater for our aircraft I'm gonna know from home or anywhere I am in the world frankly whether or not this thing is drawing any wattage and means that the engine heater on the aircraft is going to be working. So let's turn this thing on and see what happens. So, so you probably can't hear me, but let's have a look at the wattage. It's drawing 1200 watts. Let's turn this off. All right, so that worked perfectly well. I don't know if you could hear me through all that noise, but what I pointed out there is that the wattage being drawn for the hair driver suddenly showed up remotely here on the Wemo app, and it was drawing 1200 watts. That doesn't even come anywhere near the wattage that an engine heater on an aircraft draws. It, ours in our case draws maybe 300, 350 watts maximum. It's just a simple resistive heating system that goes through the oil pan, and in some cases, it also goes up to the cylinder heads of the aircraft engine. So as you can see, that works perfectly well, and now I'm out to go and put this in the field. All right, so we're out at the field at Rockcliffe, like I mentioned before we would do, and so I've come out with the box and the Wemo all set up already, connected to the Wi-Fi that we have out at the field, and I've got my insulated box still open here, and I'm gonna close it up. I've already done a little bit of testing, but simply, as I showed you earlier on in the video, we're just gonna stuff this up with the insulation, close up, this slider over here and just leave these cords hanging out the front like that and I'm going to use this strap over here to seal up the box as such and then we're going to be placing this inside our cabinet like this and we won't worry about the details on that one and we close up our cabinet as such and that keeps it protected from the elements and we're going to give it a quick test here so I've got my Wemo app on my iPhone starting it up here and I can turn it on and it's showing me that it has powered up and I can tell which you probably can't see in the video is that we're showing uh, just over 250 watts draw to the engine heater on the plane which is Right back here, we've got our line going out to the aircraft and into the engine bay, and Eureka, it works. And that's it.